Hello, thank you so much for joining me today for Give Him 15. The title of our post today is The Secret to Releasing God's Power. Luke one thirty seven. For nothing will be impossible with God. Hebrews 4.14 Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let's hold firmly to our confession. Hebrews 10.23 Let's hold firmly to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Today, I want to encourage you as you pray for prodigals, unsaved individuals, the miracle you need, even the saving of America. And since people are already thinking about Christmas, I thought I'd do so with a passage that has to do with the birth of Christ. Luke 1, 37, shown above, was the angel's response to Mary's question of how she, as a virgin, could possibly have a baby. The angel told her Holy Spirit would overshadow her and impregnate her with Christ. He then mentioned Elizabeth being pregnant with John the Baptist, verse 36. Then he made the powerful statement in verse 37, with God, nothing is impossible. A more literal and accurate translation of this verse is, for no word spoken by God is without power. That's amazing. For no word spoken by God is without power. Just let that sink in. The angel was saying, the words I'm speaking to you are God's words. Therefore, they have the power to perform this miracle. No word spoken by him is without power. What a statement. Whether it be an angel speaking God's words, as it was here, a prophet, or an intercessor walking and talking with God, no word God has spoken is without power. This is why I often put scripture references in the prayers at the end of the posts, as I did yesterday. I want you to know which verses the prayer is based on so you can be confident in its power and also to equip you as you continue praying and declaring God's words. In other words, you can use them to form your own prayers and declarations. There is no more powerful prayer or weapon against Satan than speaking God's word. As you pray for your prodigal, speak the word. Use verses Holy Spirit gives you personally, of course. You can begin by using the references I gave in yesterday's prayer. The other two verses above, Hebrews 4.14 and 10.23, encourage us to hold firmly to our confession of faith. Confession is the Greek word homologia, which simply means say the same. Confessing our faith in God is saying what he says, literally. That's what it means. This is how our faith is released, by saying what God says. This is how his power is released from us, by saying what God says, which is never without power. Don't overcomplicate it. Just say what God says. Say what he says about salvation when you're praying for the lost. Say what he says about overcoming demonic strongholds. Say what he says about your needs being met. Say what he says about your body. Say what he says about our nation. Say what God says. Both of these two verses in Hebrews also tell us to 
hold firmly to saying what he says. The King James uses the phrase hold fast, hold fast to what he says. Each verse uses a different word, however, when telling us to hold firmly to what God says. Translated the same way, but two different words. The first verse, Hebrews 4.14, uses krateo. The other uses kateko. Though they sound similar, these are completely different words. The first one, krateo, is from a word meaning strength or might. This is telling us that regardless of how much effort it requires, we must be determined to keep saying what God says. Why? Because no word spoken, no word he speaks is without power. Holding firm in the second verse, kateko, is from a word simply meaning to hold something. Pick it up, hold it. This form of the word, however, adds intensity to the meaning. Don't let go. Hold on. Don't let go of saying what God says. Grab his word, say it again, and keep on saying it. By using both of these words, Holy Spirit is telling us, hold on, keep on holding on, Hold on with all your might and strength to what God says. Why? Because no words spoken by God are without power. When you say what he says, you are releasing his power. The verse in Hebrews 4.14 actually occurs in the context of prayer. Two verses later, verse 16, we're told, come boldly to the throne of grace where we receive mercy and grace in our times of need. So, as you pray, God is saying, hold on to saying what I say with all your might and strength, which will release the power of my words and promises. And finally, Hebrews 10, 23 above tells us to do this without wavering. This is a figurative use of the Greek word aklines, which literally means not leaning, not leaning. The concept of the root word, klino, is to slant, slope, or lean. The prefix a in Greek, makes it negative. So it's without leaning or don't lean. The point is, stand upright. Be firm. Don't let anything knock you off balance. If you're leaning, you won't be able to stay on target as you press toward the finish line. You try to walk while you're leaning, you're going to get, you're going to veer off course. You get off course. You waver. Hold on to what God says. Keep saying it. And this will keep you on course while it releases his power. Take some time. and Look up verses that relate to the issue for which you are praying, whether that be a prodigal or a nation. Holy Spirit will lead you to various verses. Perhaps even get a friend or two to do the same thing. Then combine your lists and the insights he gives. Well, that would be a great thing to do. Get two or three friends. Say, let's all look up some verses on this subject right here that we can pray about together. Combine them. See what God says. Combine them. And then begin saying them. And do it together. Declare them over your situation or situations daily. This will release the awesome power of God. For today's prayer, 
Let's do something different. Use the verses I shared in yesterday's prayer and declare what God leads you to decree from them. And here they are once again, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 6, talks about the veil over the eyes of unbelievers, how God's light shines in the darkness. He, shown, he has shown in our hearts to give the light of the glory of the gospel. Well, what is he saying to you? Let him, let him work in you what he wants you to declare for your prodigal or for their, someone's salvation from these verses. That's what I did. Local 15, 17, talking about the prodigal. It says he came to his senses. That's what we prayed yesterday. Well, you can use that to form your decree. My son, my daughter, my husband, whatever, my father, will come to his senses in his pig pen. Colossians 1.13, Christ has delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his son. You can decree from that. He will do that for your son, your child. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5, our weapons aren't carnal, but mighty through God to destroy speculations and take every thought captive to Christ. Let that become your decree. Say what God says. It'll release power. Matthew 9, 38, ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers, workers into his harvest. Form your decree, your prayer, that God is going to send the right people to your prodigal. Say what he says. 2 Peter 3, 9, it's not his will that any perish. Declare that. He's not going to let your child, your family member perish. It's not his will that they perish. Form that into a decree. God's power will be released as you do. And then this decree together today. No word spoken by God is without power. Amen. Do it. And thank you for joining me. I'll see you again tomorrow where we will pray and decree once again. See you then.